Hey guys, welcome to another episode of BTS, which is behind the song, where we interview songwriters of how they wrote the song and how God has inspired them. And today we have again Lin Tia Hao from Fireplace Worship. Hey, welcome, thank thanks. you for your time. Thank you. And congratulations to the second release of uh, second single that is released uh, recently, which is called Here, Here on, on the Way. Right. Congratulations. Thank you. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the song. Uh, but I think before we, we talk about the song, I think a lot of people are wondering, uh, what is Fireplace Worship? Uh, what is it all about? And uh, because it's, it's not just a band name, I think it's more than a band name, it's more than a name of a ministry. So could you share with us what actually Fireplace Worship is all about? So actually Fireplace, uh, very much what it is, um, started actually in this studio mm. uh, where a few of us got together with the music producers and another friend. Yeah, so what Fireplace Worship is about, um, a lot of it actually started here in this studio in Norville and it was God's divine like um, leading where He brought a few of us together, uh, music producers, songwriters, worship people and um, it started off as a music project but then over time as the people came along to be part of this music project and they were musicians, they were sessionists, they were singers, they were, they were, they were people who were friends of friends, you know. And as they got involved, um, this community started to grow and what we discovered over time was that Fireplace Worship was actually more than just a music production kind of project. It actually became a community of like real authentic friendships. So we literally spent time like going to one another's houses for meals, hung out, got to know one another. And in those times of fellowship and just like being one another, the Holy Spirit will come and encounter us and it, we, will, we will worship together, we will speak into one another's lives. And we started to discover that the DNA that the Lord had for this fireplace worship was totally and all about community and family. A group of people who walk authentically in relationship with one another. So that became the foundation and the basis. But then what overflows out of that authentic community um, are real stories of how individuals encountered God. And these real stories uh, became stories that were actually told through um, the songs that we will produce, the media that we produce, basically all these creatives in that same community um, using their skills as a language to describe how God was real to us in the seasons of our lives. And then we discovered that actually God has a message for many people who are seeking for God, who are looking for something true, something to hope in and something to believe in. So God took us from a little music project to becoming a little family and then now using us as a community to share stories of how God is real to many who are actually looking for God. Oh, amazing. So how big is the group now? Uh, the group is probably um, around 15 or 16 of us. Yeah, and it's a close partnership um, of individuals because we we're not worried about trying to get more people. We just wanted the people that God was bringing to us, especially in this infant stage of growth. So we want that relationships that we have to be deep, to be strong, so that it will be a foundation for everything that we'll do down the line. Wow, that's amazing. So out of that community, um, the birth of songs, so you had the first single, which is called Praise to the One. Yeah. And now the second single, which is Here on the Waves. Yeah, right. So can you share a little bit about Here on the Waves? Uh, I heard that there's a story behind. <laughs> yeah, there is, there is. yeah, it's uh, kind of interesting because... Um, so my family, um, I have three boys. Um, we actually left um, Singapore um, after I finished uh, full-time ministry in church because we felt God was calling us to go to Youth with a Mission. So we actually spent uh, 10 over months in uh, different countries, um, learning, growing. And as we took that step of faith out, we discovered that um, it was actually a faith journey. Like God just wanted to teach us how to totally depend on Him for finances or direction and all that. So we were out there in the field and, uh, and 
God is taking us one step at a time to discover the next thing that He wants us to do, which is, which is actually not very good for us as Singaporeans <laughs> because we kind of want to know like, God, show me 10 steps ahead, you know, so I can plan, right? But God is like, no, um, if you knew all 10 steps, you wouldn't need me. Mm. So faith is that one step and one step. So I found myself and I was in New Zealand and I was in a, a second-hand car that we bought, like, um, that was not very expensive, you know. And I was writing a song inside the car and I remembered in that moment just feeling so desperate because just not knowing where God wants us to go, feeling lost, feeling um, hopeless, feeling like out on the waves as Peter was on the waves, you know, when Jesus caught him out. And I remember in that moment uh, in that car, as I took out the guitar, it was in a car park, suddenly the lyrics just came, the melody just came for the verse, for the chorus and I just started to break down and cry. Yeah, so that was how the, the majority of the song came about. So it was here on the wave and it was more of like how you felt during that time you were experiencing. Yeah, it was, it was kind of like when Jesus caught Peter out of the boat. You know, the boat itself was a place of security, but when the, when the storms actually hit that boat, right, it became not really a secure place anymore. You know, you just had to get out. So I felt like God was leading my family out in the unknown. We had to trust Him for our finances. We had to trust Him for the direction in life. There was no stability. But there I was, like, had to step out of the boat and to walk on the waves towards wow. Jesus. So talk, to, uh, talk with us through the song, um, like, from the verse to the chorus. Yeah. How, how, what was it like? Yeah. The verse, maybe share with us the verse. Yeah, so uh, the song is basically a dialogue between mm. um, the person that is walking through the storm, okay. uh, out on the waves, and with God. So you see the lyrics, there's actually two people mm. speaking to one another. Mm. So the first verse actually, the person who's in the storm is describing the situation. Okay. I see the rain is starting to fall. You know, your silhouette is in the wind. There's this hint of someone you know in the midst of the difficulty that a person is going through and it ends in that verse and i hear you calling out to me it's like a faint like a um, call yeah not so obvious but it is there and then the chorus um the first chorus comes in where god says come walk with me out here on the waves the calmness that you seek is here with me get your feet wet it's here you'll find rest now I'll hold you close to me, which is actually a paradox because how do you find yourself calm on the waves? How do you find yourself at peace when you're in the midst of a storm? But the irony is that the God who holds us in the midst of a storm, He's our place of peace. Oh, amen. So that's the, the chorus. Yeah, that's the first verse and that's the first chorus. And then how about the second and verse? And the second verse and the second chorus, God sort of takes over the conversation. Mm. Like uh, God speaks to that person, like, I see your pain, I see your tears, you think I'm far but I'm near. So God's in that dialogue with that person. And, and this is the beauty of like our relationship with God. We never always like are at a good place, right? It's like, it's not always like God is good all the time, you know? It's so many times we are in the process of discovering like our fears, our our pains, like, is God faithful enough? So God speaks to that person in the midst of his or her process, you know, and invites the person like, hey, come walk with me. I know your pain. I know your tears. Trust me. And then after that, it goes to the bridge uh, where the, the person in the storm responds, you know, you know, draw, like, draw me closer to you. I want to know your love deeper. I want to draw closer to you. And then after the whole song ends, it sort of dives down to a quiet moment where it's the final verse and the response of the individual is, I need you here, right here with me. I'm broken and torn within. You have the words of life that I need. Come breathe your breath in me. And it sort of ends with a question mark because it doesn't really mean that the person is totally okay but it's a place of utter brokenness that I think we as worshippers and even David in the Bible found himself numerous times in. God, like a broken and contrite heart, you don't despise. I'm not done with the process, but I'm encountering you in the midst of it. Wow, that is so beautiful. 
and I think it will speak to many people who are you know, uh, either about to step into the storm or on the waves <laughs> or they are already walking in the waves but they feel that they are sinking down. Yes. And I think it's beautiful that you know there's a conversation going on. Yeah, yeah it's a relationship. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. And, and um, this song was released during this season of uh, uh, <laughs> this COVID, COVID, yeah. COVID virus thing yeah. and, and I think it's really very timely exactly. It's really timely I think the whole entire uh, earth, this planet is going through this storm, this yes. wave together yes. and, and, and I, I think this is really a, a powerful song for this season And it's amazing yeah. God inspired you at that point of time yeah. And for such a season as yes. for, for now Have you heard of a lot of testimonies you know, after this song was released? Um, like not a lot but just stories mm. um, of people who are going through stuff you know, um, In a difficult situation like in a hospital mm. Or like miscarriage like mm. Things that are, are, are real yeah. and, and no one can evade a storm it does not stay away from us on our terms, right? Yeah, so just hearing these people um, going through stuff like that and hearing the song um, and it being um, more than just an answer but also a language, you know, to be able to describe like what they were going through. Yeah, it's a really a very big um, help. Yeah, because sometimes this is the goal of a song to help people find language for what they cannot describe for themselves in their pain. Yeah. And you guys also did a music video. Yeah, we did. Wow. So, and uh, that was good. Maybe you could share with us a little bit about the music video, especially the, yes. there were two stories in, yes. in that music video. Yeah, yeah. So if you can share with us. Yeah, so uh, we had two really awesome uh, videographers, um, Joshua and Dusk, and they, they just really led by God because um, the storyline was pretty much of this individual who was going through a storm. I mean, we don't say things explicitly in the video, but you could tell the person was struggling, life was tough, on a rooftop, you know, in, in pain and difficulty. Um, but then, um, in the midst of that struggle, she remembers a memory of her and her own dad when she was younger and a child. And just images of how her dad was with her and her dad loved her. She had all these precious moments of like intimacy with her dad, you know, praying with her dad, walking by the beach, you know, having fun, or even in the midst of like uncertainty and dad was there. And that becomes almost like a point of peace that, that takes her out of her pain in that moment. Yeah. And then it goes on to her like discovering freedom and stepping out in an adventure and in the unknown. It's almost like faith and trusting God, you know. Yeah, so the story actually parallels so much with our lives because in the midst of the storm, like what do we hold on to? Like if people are walking through this COVID crisis, you know, what do you hold on to? Your job, your wealth, like everything <clears throat> that is temporal is being shaken now. But the thing that is permanent and for all eternity is our relationship with our Heavenly Father. And in those moments, if we remember that our dad loves us, in those moments, we remember all the moments of intimacy that we had had with God and how as He was faithful then, He will always be in the midst of our storm, we will find peace because we know that He is near us. Oh, that's beautiful. And uh, yeah, I, I'm still amazed that, you know, at the timing of this song. Also, yeah. Like, I'm, I'm sure when you wrote this song, you didn't know what is going to happen. No, we don't. But I, I guess also not only for this season in the COVID virus, I think in, in our lives, we will definitely come across uh, seasons where we're on the waves. And yes. I believe that this song is gonna encourage and help, like, and like what you say, to help us to always remember the times, you know, the, our relationship with the Father that we have. Yes. It's our safe anchor in the yes, storm. That's right. Amen, amen, amen. And uh, we also like to thank uh, Norville Studios. Yes. This is the place that they uh, they did um, the recording even for Praise to the One. Yes, and right. also that's where all the ideas yes. came for this song, uh, Here on the Waves. So special thanks to Norville Studios for allowing us to do this interview. And uh, check it out on the website uh, below. And also check out uh, Fireplace Worship, um, what they are and who they are. And that's also the, the link below. 
And if you guys want to listen to Here on the Ways, you can visit Fireplace Worship, Spotify, and or iTunes, or go down to the website to check it out. Or you can also listen to it on Amplify Podcast, episode 27. Anyway, thank you for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. God bless.